Hello everyone, welcome to the next episode of the main story. Alright, All right, in the last episode of the main story, we beat him Noel. Oh, story. And now, let's move on to the next story, which is Rachel Alucard. Let's start her off. Lie to myself? A.D. A. 2200. Ed. Ed, that... Oh, one. Is that January or is that... Because I don't know if that's going by American date system or is that going by European. But the... Oh, oh, for... The, but the first of the third. If anybody can tell me what dating system Blaze Blue uses, if that is month and day, or if that's day and month, that would be greatly appreciated. A large moon hangs in the air. Grim dark clouds, hungry for light, devour a few remaining shafts of, sli of silvery moonlight. Suddenly, the world is a very dark place. A teapot sits upon on a on a a la a and old old embroiled with roses. Steam drifts up from the, from its spout. Its tiny shed of light against the darkness. But no sooner has it arisen than the wind snuffs it out. A man with a hair pulled back into a tight eyed quill looks up slowly. I have returned. Welcome home, my lady. Your tea awaits. Thank you. Rachel draws from her pale lips into a faint smile and absent and mindedly pushes her compliment. Eh, uh, eh, uh, a cat like umbrella inside out. All of Nagos. I can see everything. All of the the underbits. Hmm. Ow! I can't stretch that far. You're gonna tear me in half. Rachel tosses the squirming creature aside and narrows her eyes. Her mind is elsewhere. There's something amiss, my lady. It's moving again, Valkenhain. Takamagahara, you mean? Of course. If your servant may be so bold as to pose a question, what do you intend to do? Nothing. I simply... You simply? I did not think I would be seeing Teremi again so soon. Goodness gracious me! The princess being timid? This isn't something you see every day. If you perceive my tone to be a timid creature, then Teremi shall be the least of your worries. If your ears are as utterly useless as they appear to be, I fail to see why I should allow you to keep them. With an ease and grace of a servant, and Erin and friend, Valkamha, uh, I'm places Rachel's chair, and she sinks into it with a, with a dainty sigh. For a moment, and her right eyed forefinger er, traces the edge of her teacup. And then she stops, tilts her, sl her slender neck, and looks up at Valkenheim. If Teremi saw fit to insert his repugnant self into my affairs, then I've no doubt we shall see more of him, as well as his constant companion, Trouble. Indeed. How terrible. Are you sure, my lady? Why ever would you ask? Laughing while one says, how terrible, can suggest one's true sentiments are otherwise. You misheard. I was not laughing. I was sighing. My sincerest apologies, my lady. It is time I was on my way. What? You're leaving already? But, but we haven't eaten anything yet. We will eat after our task is complete. Balkenheim's scones are of such quality that no matter how long we may take, their taste shall be unchanged when we return. Where are we going, princess? Was I not clear? We are going to visit him. Him? Valkenhain? Yes, milady? I have a favor to ask of you. Of course, milady. I live only to serve. Rachel's Ill's tinkering last fills the garden. And <laughs> all right, we're already at a save, okay. Wasn't expecting that. It 
In the dim and silent room, a shadow sits in the perfect stillness. Surrounding the shadows are lines and shapes that pulse with magic, like eldritch egg tendrils. They spread in four directions, covering the entire room. The room is Sector 7's confinement chamber. The shadow called Hawkman sits silently in front of the cauldron. <sighs> Wake up, puppet. Wake up now or I shall be forced to pack that suit of yours with animals' leavings and spoiled food. I doubt that will be pleasant. Hmm. Oh, I see the tendrils of cowardice have already attached themselves to your ankles. Perhaps you should brush them off before they reach your knees. You. You must be either terribly bored or something of a madman to sit so quietly in such a ghastly place. State your business. Oh, my goodness. Such a powerful protective circle they've placed you in here. Why, it took me the entirety of five minutes to circumvent it. Practically forever. It seems you are very valuable to Sector 7. Oh, no. To Kokono. Whatever plans the Grimalkin has made are no concern of mine. Oh, and what of me? A foolish question. You know the answer. How dull. Aren't you bored here? I suppose I could spare a moment if you'd like to entertain me. Ha! Your motives are as transparent as ever. You are only here to observe. Am I wrong? Oh, perhaps you are slightly less of an idiot than I gave you credit for. And we're going to be fighting Hawkman, despite him being tied up and in no condition to fight. It's like, yep, let's fight. I don't know how we're fighting him in this state. The will of fate is turning. Rebel 1. Action! <laughs> For somebody who no, is having the wall mower, I'm going as I'm recording. So, Rachel, I am not that great at playing as I will. No. He's one of them. Many characters. Yeah. I know some of her moves are like very movement based and also uh, even. Ow. And I already lost. Great. Are you okay? Is something wrong? Surely you aren't finished already. Perhaps you'd like to play a little more. It seems you and I have somewhat different tastes. Clever words will get you nowhere. Be gone. I'm not fond of taking orders, you know. I suppose now is not the time. Nago, Gi. Yes. Okay. I am going to sleep. I leave the rest to you. Let's try it again. So yeah, as you can see, I am terrible as playing as her. As much as I like her character, I am not good as playing as her. The will of fate is turning. She's one of the few we characters I will admit that I am absolutely Action. garbage at playing at. Don't come in. 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 Don't come no. What are you doing? So what are you doing? No. That hurt me as well. Oh, come on. As soon as I get away from a safe distance, like, yep, I'm just gonna do this attack that's guaranteed to hit. It's a clever Oh, let's just skip all this dialogue. This is probably gonna be a cut until I win.
the wheel of fate is turning. Rebel one, action! Now, don't come near me. No, I'm a new. Go, go. No, I'm a new. Not 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 a new. All right, one. I was trying to do one of her supers, and the game was saying no. That was rather fun. Oh, you needn't worry. I doubt you'll be bored much longer. What do you mean? Now that Noelle has awoken as the Eye, time has begun to move. She has become the Master Unit's eyes, and she is now immortal. What? And Takamagahara? Yes. Teremi has returned to drag out the future we'd left slumbering in the depths. And lest you think that were not enough, we are currently engaged in a continuum shift. Anything can happen, and likely will. You speak as though something already has. I would rather not think of it, thank you. I have, however, heard of her awakening. I see. Then the time has come for me to take up my sword. I must go. Oh my, I see there is at least some remnant of a brain moldering in that ancient shell. But first things first, Mr. Hero, you must leave this place. I've already taken the liberty of dispelling the magic that bound you. You may thank me later. However, we must talk, and I am loath to do so here. Shall we meet in Kagatsuchi? Yes, that sounds good. I shall go on ahead. Do follow soon before I grow bored. This city lacks integrity. Princess! Darling! What are we doing in a place like this? Whiling away the hours until Mr. Hero deigns to join us. Huh? Something smells really good! It seems to be coming from this restaurant. My goodness! This restaurant smells delicious! Woohoo! It smells so good! Princess, hurry, hurry! Let's eat something! Wait! That man over there? Rachel and Grimm turn to look. Sitting in the back of the restaurant is none other than Ragna the Blood Edge. The table before him um, <laughs> piled high with food. Just what does that young man think he's doing? That girl is way too young for him. Maybe he's a... What did the princess call it? A... Pedophile? <laughs> Wah! Wha why did you hit me? Silence. Otherwise, the only pieces of you I leave will be too small for the eye to see. What? What's wrong, princess? You're so grumpy all of a sudden. It's nothing. Nothing at all. Oh. <sighs> uh, um, princess? You're not gonna talk to him? Alright, now we have to make a choice. One of these choices does um make a gag reel, so we're gonna be seeing that in the bonus episodes, but for now, let's not speak with him. For such a foolish creature. 
It's time we moved on. Whoa! I can't even remember the last time the princess didn't want to bother that guy. Yes, rather interesting, isn't it? I wonder why. Oh! You think maybe she's mad because he was with another girl? A princess? What was that? Oh, merely a simple joint lock. And with that, we will end the episode here. So in the next episode, we will continue our story. If you enjoyed this episode, do like the video as it helps tremendously. Subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a comment down below on your thoughts of this episode. And share the video so way more people can discover my content and help the channel grow. And I'll see you all next time. Later.